Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 5, Text 33, Translation and Commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Tada! Tada. Sanghatya! Sanghatya! Cha! Cha! Anyonyam! Bhagavat! Shakti! Chodidaha! Sat! Asatvam Upadaya Cha Ubhayam Sasrijuhu Hi Adaha Tada Sanghatya Chanyonyam Bhagavad Chakti Choditaha Sada Satvam Upadaya Chobhayam Sasriju Sasriju Yadaha Tada Sanghatya Chanyonyam Bhagavad Chakti Choditaha Sada Satvam Upadaya Chobhayam Sasrijur Hyadaha Tada Sanghatya Chanyonyam Bhagavad Chakti Choditaha Sada Satvam Upadaya Chobhayam Sasrijur Yadaha Tada Samhatya Chanyonyam Tada Samhatya Chanyonyam Bhagavad Tada, all those, Sanghatya, being assembled, Cha, also, Anyonyam, one another, Bhagavat, by the personality of Godhead, Shakti, energy, Choditaha, being applied, Sat, Asatvam, Primarily and secondarily. 
upadaya, accepting, cha, also, ubhayam, both, sasrijuhu, came into existence, he, certainly, adaha, this universe. First translation. Thus, when all these became assembled by force of the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, this universe certainly came into being by accepting both the primary and secondary causes of creation. Purport. In this verse, it is clearly mentioned that the Supreme Personality of Godhead exerts his different energies in the creation. It is not that he himself is transformed into material creations. He expands himself by his different energies as well as by his plenary portions. In a corner of the spiritual, spiritual skies, Brahma Jyoti, a spiritual cloud sometimes appears and the covered portion is called the Mahat Tattva. The Lord then, by his plenary portion as Maha Vishnu, lies down within the water of the Mahat Tattva and the water is called the causal ocean, Karnajal, Karnajala. While Mahavishnu sleeps within the causal ocean, innumerable universes are generated along with his breathing. These universes are floating and they are, they are scattered all over the causal ocean. They stay only during the breathing period of Mahavishnu. In each and every universal globe, the same Mahavishnu enters again as Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu and lies there on the serpent like Shesha incarnation. From his navel sprouts a lotus stem, and on the lotus, Brahma, the Lord of the universe, is born. Within the universe, Brahma creates all forms of living beings of different shapes in terms of different desires. He also creates the sun god, the moon god, and all the demigods, and other demigods. Therefore, the chief engineer of the material creation is the Lord himself, as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, text 10. It is he only who directs the material nature to produce all sorts of moving and non-moving creations. There are two modes of material creation, the creation of the collective universes, as stated above, done by the Mahavishnu, and the creation of the single universe. Both are done by the Lord, and thus the universal shape, as we can see, takes place. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shrishtam Manamapi Shachiputram Atra Sarupam Rupam Tasyagrajam Urupurim Maturim Goshtavartim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhavasham Prapto Yasya Pratita Kripe Ashri Gurum Tamnatosmi Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Ataf Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavanscha Shri Rupam Sagraja Tam Sahagarna Raghuna Tan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutang Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagarna Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Guru Vaishnav Bhagavan Tine Smarone Hoi Bigna Binashan Anayashe Hoi Nijavan Chita Puran Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <clears throat> This section of the Bhagavatam is informative, descriptive, informative. It elaborates on the first statement of the Srimad Bhagavatam describing the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Janmadhyasya yataha Janma adi Here Janma is understood to be the beginning or in relation to the universe, that means the creation. Janmadi, that means Janna, etc. 
the creation, maintenance, and destruction. Asya, this, in this context, referring to this everything, this universe, uh, yataha, by whom. When we say universe, that has two meanings, if we translate it back to Sanskrit. Uh, there's Brahmanda. What, what we call a universe is a universe, is a Brahmanda, one particular universe. And then we have Jagat, which is all the universes together. So the word universe is something, in the terms of the uh, English etymology, it's something like atom. It's based on a misunderstanding. That the universe, atom means the smallest thing. And it was presumed, what was presumed to be an atom was the smallest thing. And then they found smaller and smaller things. So it's not really the smallest thing. <coughs> And universe means uh, all that is. But now in certain scientific circles, it's postulated that there is a multiverse, that there are many universes, which of course fits with the Puranic description, which we read about in this purport which probably for those who are coming newly here, you understood the words, just like in this, it said, in this verse, you can understand what those words mean. I'm talking particularly to all those who are coming newly here. In this verse, it is clearly mentioned that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you got stuck there, probably, what is that? You understand the word supreme, you understand the word personality, Maybe. I don't know. Personality is not. Actually, all these words, if you take them philosophically, supreme, oh, we have a general idea of what it means, but what does it actually mean? That's a big question. And then personality, we know what the English word means, at least at a superficial level, but if you take it, you want to get into it. What, what does personality mean? And of, okay, that's an easy word. And then Godhead, that's a tough one. And then we get into technical terms, Brahma Jyoti, Mahatattva, Mahavishnu, causal ocean, and you're lost. <laughs> Not only struggling to stay awake after getting up earlier than usual, most probably, but it's not easy to understand. This is Srimad Bhagavatam. This is considered the postgraduate study of spiritual knowledge. So it's not going to be that easy. We're throwing you in at the deep end, so to speak, is our regular morning discussion. <clears throat> so Janma, this is addressing the creation of the universe. And there's also maintenance and destruction in the Abrahamic religions, of which in this part of the world Christianity is most prominent, there is much stress on God, the meaning of God, the creator of the world. <clears throat> but the Puranic or Vedic understanding is that there's more than one creator. There's only one supreme God, but there's what's called in technical terms, demiurge, the one who, the God who creates the universe. And there are many universes, multiverse, that idea. That's already there in the Vedic description. Brahmanda, it's, under means an egg shape. It literally means an egg. So the universe is not exactly round, but it's shaped somewhat like an egg. And there are many, many such universes, although if you use the English word universe, it should be only one. <laughs> but the whole, all of it put together is called Jagat. 
gajatiti jagat, that which is always moving, is called the universe. Uh, so here we have a description of the creation. It is, of course, uh, simplified, put succinctly, because to explain it in detail is not the main purpose of the Bhagavatam. And even if it was given in great detail, we probably wouldn't understand it anyway. But it's just to stress the point, or to elaborate on the point, that yes, God is the creator. But God is much, much more than the creator. And why is the creation created in the first place? I always had a problem being raised as a Christian wondering why God in his infinite wisdom at some point in, in infinite time decided to create the universe, throw a bunch of souls in there, most of them who are destined to go to hell forever, and then again wind it up. So in, it's just a blip in time. The, the existence of the universe, the material universe, is just a blip in time. And in the meantime, a whole bunch of souls get sent to hell forever. So it didn't make a lot of sense to me. But here we have the description of the material universes being created. <coughs> uh, how does God create? Is he working hard? Must be a big job, right? To create the universe. It's a big job. You've got to get it right. If you don't get it right, then nothing works properly. Even to build a motor car, you've got to get it right. If the the uh, everything has to be in the right. If you put the chassis on the roof, I, 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 maybe it's possible. I don't think anyone designed a car like that. Maybe I could make patent it and make a lot of money. But. Uh, I uh, put the wheels in the wrong place, or they're not, or just even, uh, just not tightly enough. Little thing, little thing goes wrong, and everything goes wrong. M marvel of modern engineering. The, the laptop computer, unimaginable, even two generations ago. When I was growing up in Merry England, we heard about computers. One computer takes up a whole room and gives out ticker tape and doesn't <laughs> and doesn't have the capacity. You know what ticker tape is? Maybe saw in old movies or something. And doesn't have the no nowhere near the capacity of just something you, any laptop that anyone has. <clears throat> now it's a marvel of modern engineering, which was made possible by the the Transistors was a revolution in engineering, technology, and then microchips. What a revolution that was, that made possible small computers, laptop computers, unimaginable. But the same thing in a computer, if there's something a little bit wrong, like in your car, if something's a little bit wrong, it might work somewhat, <coughs> but some things can be very dangerous, just like you know, if your wheel is loose can be very dangerous if you're going down the highway past the speed limit and your wheel, one of the wheels, falls off. It can be very dangerous. And the car won't work properly uh, if you try to drive on, on through. Or just a simple thing, put diesel into the engine instead of petrol. Gasoline, it's called here. And then it's just not going to work. Uh, similarly with a computer, a little thing goes wrong and uh, the whole thing doesn't work. So what is speak of the universe? How precisely it must be put in order. And that is a point which the scientific <coughs> non-orthodoxy, what's the word for that? Heterod heterodoxy. They're, they're, the, the intelligent design, they point out all these uh, scientific constants, all the conditions which are required for the universe as we are living in it 
to exist and and for evolution to work if you take biological evolution as a fact and you accept that complex life forms evolved from simple life forms and life forms in themselves evolved from chemicals which goes against the basic law of entropy does it not what do you think everything should in remember chemistry Every, <laughs> The uh, law of entropy. Come on, that's that's uh, that's just above A B C, isn't it? That everything tends towards in any given system, anything tends towards chaos. Of course, I don't know because I didn't study all these things ever, actually. But at least I was stuck in the chemistry class uh, over fifty years ago. Uh, <coughs> but anyway, just if you forget the. Uh, the massive, uh, whoops, we don't really know about that, how chemicals can turn into life forms. Just, we'll just, let's not think about that right now. Uh, <laughs> I always wonder how that's possible, how that's possible, how one bunch of chemicals falls in love with another bunch of chemicals. Or feels angry at another bunch of chemicals or identifies with one bunch of... I, I'm a Russian bunch of chemicals and you're a Ukrainian bunch of chemicals, so I'm going to terminate your bunch of chemicals. In the meantime, while you're talking, the Ukrainian bunch of chemicals terminates the Russian bunch of chemicals. And what was I talking about? Went off track there. That, uh, yeah, the... the, the uh, yeah, so the... the, the fine-tuning that's required for the universe as we know it to exist, which facilitates the coming into being of life forms. So this is, this is a strong point. It's even Richard Dawkins, so I'm told, uh, said that, well, yeah, that's that's a tenable argument, something like that. He, uh, uh, I looked it up on the internet, and the uh, the argument against that, the strongest argument seems to be that, well, maybe there is a scientific reason which we haven't discovered yet. <laughs> Sounds like God of the gaps. They say, well, if you if you don't understand it, it's God. Okay, well, if you don't understand it, well, we'll understand it in future. But, as a scientific theory or a hypothesis, that there is intelligent organization and design seems to make a lot more sense than it could have come into being simply by random interaction of chemicals because the odds are so great. Now you could say, well, if there's an infinite number of universes, then one of them could have been, uh, one of them could have these requisite conditions to be as this one is. That means there are so many other universes. And in all the other universes, they're all duds, right? It didn't happen. But then I thought the universe came into being with a Big Bang, which is a singularity. So how can you have unlimited other, other universes which also come into being with a, a singularity? Singularity, that means it only happens once. Right? By, and that's also not explained. It's, there was nothing, absolutely nothing, which means there was no time either, and then there was a big explosion, and then everything just came into being exactly correctly so that we can sit here today and talk about it. Uh, the Vedic version doesn't accept this. The Vedic ver version accepts that there is a cause of all causes. 
according to Big Bang Theory, the cause of all causes in the universe is the Big Bang, which is uncaused. As Rupert Sheldrake says, give us one, well, he's quoting someone else, give us one miracle and we'll fill in all the rest. The one miracle is the Big Bang. It's unexplained, unexplainable. So it's a miracle. So if, if you allow us to have, just give us one miracle and then we'll explain the rest. The Vedic version is that there is a cause of all causes. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha and Adir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. The Supreme Controller is called Krishna, which means all attractive. There are many names for God. Krishna means all attractive. He's the creator and the maintainer and the destroyer of the universe and much, much more. Even atheists are attracted to God. They can't stop talking about him. They talk about him more than many theists do. <laughs> if there's no God, then why bother? Just you know, smoke a joint and twiddle your, twiddle your thumbs, right? <laughs> if there's no God, why bother about why bother about anything? Why bother about anything? Because you anyway you're born and you're just you're just a bunch of chemicals and it's gonna die and what the hell? Not that you believe in hell. But uh, why bother? But they're, they're, they're fixated on trying to prove that there's no God. But why should they bother? They're infatuated. So they're also attracted to Krishna. That's Krishna means all attractive. So they're attracted. They're attracted to think about and discuss about God. He's the creator, yeah, the supreme controller. For us in this material situation, it is important to think about God as the creator and the controller. That's the beginning of understanding. This is the second canto of Bhagavatam, which gives the introduction to the scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead, especially in the matter of how God interacts with this material cosmos, the material universes, because that is where we are at. Actually, the existence of God is not simply to facilitate the material universe. If we think of God as the creator, then that, that puts importance on the material universe. But he has his own spiritual world. It's not his greatest glory to create this world. This world can be considered to be like a, a toilet. It's, 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 it's inglorious. It's something necessary, but it's, it's not the, the, the greatest architectural achievement in, in, a, in a long life of building so many buildings. Here it is, folks. Da, 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 da. Open the door. It's a toilet! <laughs> yeah, you build it, some big building. America's famous for building big buildings. Every city has high rise. Maybe in California, not so much because of earthquakes. And so. Is it? Don't know. Is it there? I can't remember. Poor memory. They have, yeah, yeah, they have in downtown LA. But, uh, and then the world's imitating. I want to be like America. Someone always builds the world's highest building and then someone else builds another world's highest building. I was just in Dubai where they have the world's highest building. And it's built just for the sake of being the world's highest building. <laughs> That's why it was built. So we could say, we got the highest building in the world until someone else builds another higher building. And then they can have the, the honor of having the world's 
highest building. So what was I talking about? I got lost myself. The toilet, yeah. So, so in the world's highest building, no doubt there are toilets. You don't stick your backside out the window on the 200th floor and <laughs> let it drop. It's possible. That's how they used to do it in, uh, in the Tower of London, by the way. The, they didn't have such uh, sophisticated things as flush toilets. Uh, so no doubt there are toilets in there. And some people, they, uh, they really get into making their toilet like really pff, fabulous toilet with all kinds of uh, facilities for pooping in the best possible way. <laughs> Gold doorknobs. Remember one of our Iskon gurus, who they used to call the sun god. He had gold doorknobs on his toilet. That's to show you're a very important person if you have gold doorknobs on your toilet. Uh, but that presupposes that if there are gold doorknobs on the toilet, then there are gold doorknobs on every door. And if the toilet itself is so uh, extravagant, then what's the rest of the building like? So that gives us a clue. This, this whole material world is quite amazing. If we study science, it's quite amazing. So many things about it are amazing. We should be amazed. But if we think that the, the supreme creator of this world, then what kind of world does he live in? If this material world is the place where we have smelly bodies, smelly things come out of the bodies, uh, you can have, apart from pooping, you can have bad breath, strong bodily odor, uh, and definitely when the body releases the soul, when the soul leaves the body, and the body left, it immediately starts to decompose and stink. So th this world, if we analyze it a little deeply, it's not very nice. We make so much fuss over whether someone's got a black skin or a white skin or a female genital or a male genital, but inside it's just a big mess, whatever it is. It's not very attractive. Take the most beautiful woman, Miss Georgia, the most whole most beautiful woman in the hall of Georgia, just peel her skin off. Who, who's gonna make, make that a pin-up? It's not very attractive. Beauty is skin deep. This material world is not an attractive place. That's an important lesson we learn in the Bhagavad Gita. We shouldn't be attached to this world. It's not a world of happiness. So the Supreme Lord creates this world to facilitate the childish infatuations of we, the conditioned souls, who want to enjoy separately from him. But what is his world like? That we should learn from Bhagavatam. Now we're learning about how he creates this material world, Mahavishnu. We have in this uh, in this purport, we have the the terms uh, plenary portion comes in this purport. What that means is that Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead is one, God is one, but he manifests various forms. In one sense, all living beings are parts of God. We all share in the same qualities of God in minute, uh, in a minute, 
What's the proportion? Very small. God is conscious, we are conscious. God is eternal, we are eternal. And God is full of bliss and we are full of bliss. But in this material world, we are conscious, but we're almost as if unconscious because we're not conscious of our actual position, that we're spiritual beings. We are in ignorance. We are as if non-eternal because the body is born and then dies. But then it's born again and dies again. So we're in a situation which is as if non-eternal. We have accepted a position of temporality and we desire happiness but we don't get it. That is the nature of this material world. But in illusion we try to enjoy it and we get a little pleasure but it's incomplete and temporary. The nature of happiness in this world is incomplete and temporary and there's the Sanskrit term is there, uh, shuti sukham, shuti sukham. We, we hear about it as being happy, just like you see some advertisement, buy this, buy that, drink coke and you will be happy. That's not exactly the advertisement, but the, the implic, it's implied. But, and you see people in the advertisement smiling and coke and ah, but when you drink coke, it doesn't happen. It's just advertised, that's all. So everything in this material world is... The, the thought of being happy is there, but it doesn't really happen. Or if it happens, it's in minute quantity. You might, you might get a little sensation of that's some taste of Coca-Cola. Something, something resembling happiness is there. But as spiritual beings, we're meant for unlimited, eternal bliss. So in the material world, what happens? The plenary portion. Plenary portion means God expands himself into various forms for executing various purposes. In his original form as Krishna, he's simply enjoying himself. And how does he enjoy himself? With all his pure devotees in the spiritual world. Main activity is dancing. That's why in the Hare Krishna movement we dance. It's an expression of spiritual happiness and it, it invokes spiritual happiness. So for creating the material world, he takes the form of Mahavishnu. Adhara Shaktim Avalambe Parang Samarthi. How does that verse begin? Yakarnanava Jale Bhajatisma Yogam. And uh, Adhar Shakti, yeah. Ah. And there's another one, yeah. Nishvasita Kala Matava Lamya Jivanti Loma Kupa. Vilaja, where does it go? Ah. Vishnur Mahan Sehayasya Kala Vishesha Govinda Madi Purushantamaja. So in, in the Brahma Sanghita, there are two verses describing Mahavishnu who simply lies down and in his sleep he dreams. When we dream, it's we dream and there's something goes on, but when he dreams, something real happens. And the, the universes come from his body in minute form and then they expand. That fits, doesn't it, with big with Big Bang theory. But the the description is that just like we, this got Loma Cooper. That means the hair on the body, it comes from a, a little follicle, I believe the word is. Is that the right word? A little little hole in the skin. Hmm? Skin pores, yeah. And out of the skin pores of Mahavishnu come universes in a very small seed form, and then they expand. So that Mahavishnu is an equal form of Krishna, but he is for a particular purpose. And then Mahavishnu expands himself again and into every universe God enters at the bottom of the universe. And 
he lies down in the bottom of the universe and then again expands himself into a form in everyone's heart. God is in everyone's heart. He sees everything. Upajashtanu mantacha. He sees everything and he lets us, he, he facilitates what we do. We may say, I did this. But it's only because God allows us to do it. He facilitates it. <clears throat> so there's uh, some points about the uh, creation of this world. It's, it's quite a subject, quite uh, technical, somewhat difficult to understand how the the elements are there originally. When we say elements in the Vedic under understanding, it doesn't exactly mean hydrogen, helium, and all these things. But it means the, the basic uh, substances from which they're transformed in various ways. So the, the, uh, the elements come into being, the senses come into being, the sense objects come into being. This is all described in Srimad Bhagavatam. I'm not going to get into it in more detail just now. I'll finish there. Hare Krishna. It's just just a little reminder as we all go about our daily duties, we should discuss what we're doing here. Otherwise, it's easy to get caught up just in doing so many things without remembering that we're all doing, we're doing all of this for Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna. I'll finish there. Vancha kalpa tarubhyascha kripa sindhu bhyavacha patita anam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha dante nidhaya chunakam padiyo nipatya kritva chaka kushatam etha. Aham Ravimi, He Sadhava Sakala Evi Vyayat Rad, Gauranga Chandra Charne Kurutana Raga, Parivada Tujano Yatata Tava, Nano Mukharo Namayam Vicharyama, Hari Rasa Madhi Ramadati Matapu Vivalu Tama Natama Nir Vishwam, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama. Jai Hare Krishna.